Hello, welcome to my quick guide on how to get started with making a Trouble in Terrorist Town map. We are always looking for hot new maps to play Trouble in Terrorist Town on, and in this quick 20 or so minute video, I'm going to walk you through making a complete and playable map from start to finish. As long as you own, on Steam, Gary's Mod, then you already own everything you need to build something completely playable. If you want to watch me making a Trouble in Terrorist Town map live, I occasionally stream it, on twitch.tv forward slash sjin, S-J-I-N. So stop on by, maybe you'll learn a thing or two, maybe you can teach me a thing or two, or maybe you can help contribute to the map, give me some ideas, have your own say in what you want us to play. So first up, let's show you how to get to the actual editor. So we're in Steam, as you can see right now, we've gone to the library section, and it's in recent, because we've been playing Gary's Mod just now, actually. If you right-click on Gary's Mod in your library, you can go to Properties, then local files and you can browse the local files. This will take you to where Gary's Mod is installed on your computer. You want to go to bin and inside bin you'll scroll down and you'll see this application here called Hammer. Okay so the map editor is called Hammer and now it is open. It looks very confusing and there's nothing here yet but don't worry we're going to walk you through everything. You're going to need to download the entity list, which is basically a list of all the placeables you can put down in a Trouble in Terrorist Town map. You need to be able to put down locations where players can start, all of their spawn points. You need to be able to put down guns and ammo, but those are the only three things you need. Guns, ammo, and places for players to start. So to get all of the player spawns, you're going to want to find the FGD file. And that's as easy as putting in TTT, FGD in Google. The top link will be ttt.badking.net and uh, this has exactly what you need, but also it's a good resource for reading. All we really need from this website right now is the FGD. So if you click on this FGD link here, it will download the FGD. We'll put it in materials for now. Materials is often a good place to put things like textures and stuff. So materials, right click, paste TTT FGD. Now we go back into Hammer and we have to load that file in Hammer. So tools and options and uh, game data files are what we're looking for. So we can add materials and there it is, ttt.fgd, open. You can also add base and Half-Life 2, which we're going to do. And what this will do is this will give us access to other textures from Half-Life 2 that aren't in base Gary's mod. So now with those loaded, there's a whole bunch of other settings you can tweak around with here. Something I like to do, for example, is put the, uh, the clipping plane up. And this will let you see further in the 3D views. Model render distance quite high as well, and detail too. You can also enable auto save, and since Hammer is very prone to crashing, we're going to set this to about five minutes so we don't lose too much work. So that is all of our preparation work done. But we've got nothing here. Look at this, all these grey buttons on the left. None of this I can click. We've just got a big grey area. What's going on here? Well, we need to start a new map. So file, new map, and here it is. So, oh my god, now this is where things get scary. To start with though, we're going to make the grid size larger because we're going to get a max grid. Why? Because it makes things a bit easier to see. And generally speaking, when you're making a TTT map, you want to keep everything on a grid as much as possible. Half-Life and, and Gary's Mod is a game. They like straight lines. They don't really like diagonal lines. They definitely don't like um, cylinders and spheres. They're fine to work with. You can mess around with them but they will make the map take a lot longer to build when you finally do end up compiling it. So a simple walkthrough on the buttons on the left. So you've got the selection tool, you've got the magnify tool, which is useful for zooming in and out on, a, on a, one of these windows. You've got the camera tool, the 3D camera manipulation that will let you move this camera around and put it somewhere. Entity tool, which lets you place an object, like for example a weapon, ammo, or a player spawn point. Now making a map in TTT is very simple. You have to imagine that you're just using blocks and all kinds of shapes that you can move around and manipulate to create a world to jump around in. So the first thing we're going to do is make our first block. The top right window is a top-down view, and if you hold your mouse over the corners here, you can see what their axes are and what the, what the view is. So this is the side of the map, this is the front of the map, and this is the top down. And you can drag your shapes around in here. This doesn't actually create an object, it just makes a, like a loose pattern in the world. You have to right-click and create the object, or press enter, to actually make it a real thing. So we'll make a cube for now, just a big old cube. Now the cube will have a texture on it. This is going to be a cube, but it's going to have a texture, or it's going to have like a paint job on the cube. 
And at the moment, that is black outline. We don't want black outline, so we're going to go orange. There's a texture here called orange. That looks good to me. Right click, create object, and there we go. We have our orange cube. So this is supposed to be the 3D view. And you can see here the wireframe around this big old cube. Or, well, it's not really a cube, but it's close enough. But it doesn't have any colors yet, so we need to change this view to be textured. And you can do that by going up to View, 3D, and you want to go for Textured Polygons. That'll let you see the actual block with the texture that we gave it, the orange texture over here. And now let's zoom in on that. In Camera View, you can move around with the left click. And if you hold left and right click, you can zoom forwards and backwards if you push the mouse up and down, or left and right. But if you tap Z while you're on this window, you can get FPS controls which will let you zoom around as if you're in an FPS. So if you press Browse, you get this big window here. And these are all the textures in the game. Some of these textures do special things, so be careful which ones you pick. For example, if you type in Water in the filter down here, and you pick one of these Water textures, that's going to do something special. That's going to turn the block into water. So you don't want that. But to be able to see what we're doing, first we're going to put down uh, a nice grid. So we'll use this orange here with the white lines. That's going to make it much easier to see what's going on. So that's selected, and now the rest of these tools are Toggle Texture Application, which is where you can go and change specific faces of the cube, give them a texture. Apply Current Texture, which is what we want, so we'll hit that now. And then Apply Decals, which is about putting in, like, um, sprays. Overlays are another way of putting down sprays. Clipping is a way to clip a 3D object, to so shave off a bit of it. And the vertex tool, when you click on that, it gives you all of the vertexes on a object like this cube, and you can play around and move them around and create your own custom shape, as you can see here as we're doing. We don't want to do that because that makes things a bit tricky. So we're going to make a very small map to start with, and we're going to put right in the middle, this X here, our first player spawn point. So as you can see on the top down, it's right there. But on the side view, it's not quite central, so we'll make it the very center of the map where the X is, looks good to me, right click and create object. And if we zoom in, you'll be able to see exactly what this is. But we'll make the square much smaller to start with now because that's that's the player start. And uh, we're gonna make this much smaller square around this. There we go, that looks much better. Much smaller, much easier to work with. Now there's two ways you can build a room. You can build literally all of the walls, so you're going to put down six different blocks around the edge and try and make sure there's no leaks in between the two. Or an easier way to do things is right click and make this a hollow object. 32 sounds good for the thickness of a wall. And there we go, we have a room with a dude. If we go to 3D camera mode, we'll be able to zoom in closer and you can see the actual player spawn. There's our dude, that's going to be where the player spawns. So now, to make things easier to see, we're going to make sure we give the floor a different colored texture and the roof also a different colored texture. So press Z again to exit this mode. Toggle Texture Application, and this is where things get fun. This is where most of the art of a level comes in, actually painting the textures onto the map. So if we browse, I like this dev stuff, so we're going to use the gray, which complements the orange quite well. So if you left click on, on a shape, or on the side of an object, this will tell you what that texture is. If we select a texture in here, and we're going to use Dev Mesh Generic, which is the grey alternative, then right click on a surface, it'll make that surface the texture that you have selected. But if we left click on the orange thing again, it'll make the texture that we have selected the orange thing. So you can click on this to make it grey, right click on the wall, that becomes grey, Left click on this one to get the orange texture back, and then right click to paint that around. So that's the floor. And now we need to make sure the roof has something special too. So we're going to go for a special type of texture for this. We're going to go for the skybox texture. And this is a special texture that will make the uh, the, the side of the uh, the side of this face look like the sky and be kind of 3D and see-through. So skybox. And uh, we'll pick this skybox sky day 05 right click there and that's made the roof a skybox the floor gray and the sides of this room orange now we'll exit texture application mode and again make this whole room a bit smaller now because this guy is very small compared to the size of the map now be careful that your player spawn doesn't spawn outside of the map here you can see there his uh, his legs are stuck in the floor. And at any time you can also change the size of the grid to make things easier, but we're not. We're going to keep it as this size just because we're going to make a very small map. 
Now we'll select him. Bring him up, and he'll snap to that location there. But that should be fine, even though he's up in the sky, when the map starts, he'll be put on the ground so he doesn't fall from the sky and die. So, using all that we've learned now, we're going to make the grid smaller, using the smaller grid button here. Looks good to me. Now we have a much smaller grid, and we're going to put down some more of these objects to make the map have some stuff to hide behind, because you can't have a wide open TTT map. You've got to have stuff to hide behind. So you can create objects. We've just made blocks so far, but there's also, if you look down here, these are the blocks you can make on the bottom right. You've got primitives and prefabs. We want to stick with primitives for now. And you can make a block, an archway, a cylinder, a sphere, a spike, a torus. I don't even know what a torus is. Or a wedge. And so to show you what I mean, we're going to make a cylinder in the corner. Just there. And not a very big one. You can choose how many sides it has. Eight at the moment. We're going to go ten. Let's go crazy. Now create the object. We're going to 3D mode and you can see here we've got a cylinder instead of a wall. So you want more than this, but you're tired of dragging out specific shapes and working like that. Well, you can copy and paste quite easily. If you select the wall, hold down shift and drag that, you'll create another wall and copy it. Pretty simple. There's also other things you can do with this stuff. If we click on the wall and then while in the overhead or side views, click on the object again. At the moment, we can change its dimensions using like the, uh, the corners or the sides. Easy enough. If you click again, you can get to the rotation mode, which lets you rotate a wall. Very nice. And if you click again, you can get to the skew mode, which lets you skew an object in weird ways. Ooh, that looks crazy. You can also move it around as much as you like. So let's put this in the corner and make it a bit lower. And now we have a diagonal wall in the corner that leans out. And you can do all kinds of things. If you want to make small little kind of crates, you can just do a one block here, like we're doing now. Oh, it's in cylinder mode, whoops. So go back to block. Create the object and we've got one block. And what we can do is hold shift, copy that again. 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 Hold shift and just keep copying this bad boy. Then go down to the side view, hold shift, drag it up and put bricks on top of it as well. So now you have like multi layers of these blocks, just like crates. Perfect. And this is the essence of map making. If you want to make a ramp, simple. Just uh, select one of these cubes over here. Copy it over to where we are now. You see there? Make it long. Real long. Go to the side view over here. Skew it. Bring it up. Lower the bottom so you can get on it. And there you go, you have a ramp. So now you can get up on that wall, super simple. And that is basically the bread and butter of building the physical part of the map. The actual blocks that you can stand on, walk around, hide behind and shoot at. However, there is still one more thing we need to do to make this map playable, and that's to put down the entities. So we've put down our first player start over here, but we're gonna have to change what this guy is. So we'll move him over here to the corner instead. You can see he's uh, up here in the corner now. Bring him down to the floor a bit as well. Now that we've got a smaller grid. Perfect. Now if we right click on this guy, change his properties. He says he's an info player start. We don't want that. We wanna go TTT. And this shows you all of the TTT specific um, things you can put in the game. So you can put down specific guns, like you can have a, a Glock. Or you can just go and put down a TTT random weapon, random ammo, which is what we prefer to do just because we have so many random guns that aren't in the base TTT game. But the player spawn that we want to use isn't TTT specific. It's a deathmatch player spawn. So if you put death, death in here, it will say info player deathmatch. And there we go. You can ignore the flags and the outputs and the inputs and the model and, and all of this stuff. Doesn't really matter. We'll select apply and you can again, same as with the blocks, hold shift and copy this around. And you're going to want a lot of player spawns in your TTT map. So we're going to put down how many, how many we've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go 10. And even then, 20 even is, is a much more reasonable amount of player spawns. So we have the players. Okay. We're going to put down another light bulb. Right click, create object. And this is going to be a gun, random weapon. 
sure, okay, apply. Hold shift, copy this next to it. Uh, and then that's two guns next to each other. Hold shift, move it down. Right click on this one, properties. And this is gonna be random ammo. Apply. And there we go, two random guns and four random bits of ammo. So if we go over here in the map, you can see where they are. Ah, so you see, they're actually sticking out of the ground because top down there in the right place, but from the side view, you can see here, these guns and ammo are in the floor. So we'll hold control this time, select all of these. You can just left click to drag these up so they're in the right position, just above the ground. Click the gun again, because we didn't select it. Got him, bring it up. Now if we drag our own square like this, and then press enter, it'll select all the entities within that space. However, that's a few too many. We've also got the uh, the background in there, so we can get rid of that. We've also got that player start there, which we can get rid of. But yeah, now we can hold shift with all of these selected and copy all of them at the same time. Great. And now we have four locations that are, that are gonna spawn in total, two, four, six, eight guns and loads of ammo. Perfect. So we've got the player start locations, we've got the guns and we've got the ammo. What do we need now? We should have everything, right? Well, not entirely. You also need to do one very important thing with your level, and that is put some lighting in. And this, this is another entity, another placeable thing that you place. We're gonna put it reasonably high in the sky. In fact, we're gonna select the whole room and bring the sky down a little bit, because it's a bit way too high still. Select the light bulb and uh, put this light pretty high in the sky and pretty middle. Right click, create, zoom up to it, properties. And here we go. Now, if you type in light, it will show you all the different types of lights. So there's, you can get really artistic with this. You can make spotlights that light up the entire map. Specifically, you can have like 60 different spotlights, make things very detailed and uh, very artistic. You can go for a simple light with nothing after it. And that literally just creates one ball of light that can be a bit abrasive. Or you can give a light environment that's going to light up the entirety of your map from a certain direction. And that's a lot like the sun. In fact, if you press apply here, it will change the icon to this guy here who looks kind of a bit like the sun. Hello, my dude. Now, this is where you are going to want to change some of these variables. For example, pitch urine roll, pitch brightness. These are all things that you can do. And if you're curious about them, you can always press help to find out what they do. So light environment. Pitch, the downward pitch of light from the sun. Zero is horizontal, minus 90 is straight down. Well, we're using the sun, so straight down sounds okay, but it's not high noon. So we're gonna go minus 80 to make it just a bit angled. Click on that, change the value up here to minus 80, whoops. Minus 80, apply. We'll leave all the other values as they are, like the brightness is gonna stay at 200. The first three here are colors. And you can change the color of the lighting. That can be very cool, very fun, but we're not going to bother. Apply. Close that. Now, as we zoom around, we have a complete map. We just finished the map. It's now playable, and people could come on here and do it. And this took us all of about 15 to 20 minutes. No time at all. We can make this map much bigger. We could have made this main room five times the size. We could have added... 10 times the amount of blocks and cylinders and things and spun them around. We could have done whatever we want. But the big question now, has this worked and what's gone wrong? So we're gonna run this map and test it. So you wanna go up to file and you wanna go to run map. Click on this. It'll ask you where to save it. We're gonna keep it in Gary's mod bin and we'll just call it test map one. Save. Now you can mostly ignore these. These are the different ways it compiles the map. Some numbers and things will appear as it compiles the map and then it'll try and load the game. And now we're gonna jump in and give this bad boy a bit of a test. So immediately we've tested our map and you can see we have a small problem. There's no light. It looks completely pitch black in this. So why is that? Well, it doesn't matter. We can press escape, come out and see. So if you have any problems, they'll be in this compile process window here. It's all very technical. So learning what all of this means can be tricky. But according to this, the lighting looks like it's done everything okay. So I think it could be the skybox that's messed us up. Now immediately I can see the problem was we used a skybox texture from here and not the dev skybox. What you want is the dev skybox. So it's tools, skybox down here. Clicking on this should fix our problem. This is the one you want. Because what this does is this makes sure this is the sky and then it assigns the sky to be 
whatever you set in the map properties. So if we go to tools or map, map properties, you can look in here and it says skybox texture name. And you can change whatever this says to the texture that you found and it'll change it to look like that. Okay, apply. So we should have fixed all our problems here. Let's try and test that again. Run the map. Hooray, and it has worked. Okay. So a quick fly around shows you our complete map. It's very small, like I said, but we've created a fully working TTT map. The light is coming down from above. The sky works properly. And as you can see underneath this ramp here, we have a shadow. And we have a slight shadow on these walls to the side because we gave the sun a bit of an angle. But we're only in spectator mode at the moment. Why? Because you can't play TTT with only one player. Doesn't work. But there's some console commands on the website that I gave you at the start of the video that will help you launch the map. I'll show you what those are now. Configuring for testing by yourself. So you want to put TTT minimum players one. Go to the console, which is the key next to the key one. Oh, there's some problems here with a script, but that's to do with uh, some of the add-ons that we have in the game. And there we go, minimum players changed to one, and now we can run around the map and test it. What this might do is end the game after the preparation phase, because I'll always win, because I'm the only, only player. But you can see we can pick up different guns now, test them out, shoot the walls, crazy. Man, exciting. So we've got ourselves a trouble in Terrorist Town map. We've done it. We're going to win. Are we going to win? Yeah, traitors win because I'm the last surviving traitor. But hot diggity damn, it works. And this, we've only really scratched the surface. We've only scraped the top of the cream off of this very, very juicy custard. Uh, and there is so much more to map making if you want to get into it. So what are you waiting for? I hope this has inspired you to go and make your own creations. The world is your oyster. Do you want to make a space station map? Do you want to make a map that is a moving train where when you jump on the floor, it kills you because you're moving at the speed of sound? Think outside the box. I've been Sjin. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to. Again, my Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv forward slash Jin, and you can see me there making maps in TTT from time to time. Also become a member if you'd like, because members' videos are coming, so stay tuned. But until next time, that's it from me. Take care.